Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a homeschool haul to share with you today. This is going to be the last one for this school year so it's a little bit on the smaller side and it's quite diverse for materials that we are going to be using for our history unit and our science unit and then some general supplies that I like to have on hand for the projects that we end up doing in many of our subject areas. So some of these things we've actually ordered before, we have used them up and we're ordering them again so they're not quite as exciting as some of the newer material that I have to share with you today. So let's dive in and we're gonna start with the books first. I have a few books here that are added to our Ibn Battuta unit study. So you can find out more about that unit study by checking the description box below. There's a link to all the videos that we did for that unit. And you can head over to my website, pepperandpine.com. That link is also in the description box below. And you can check out that whole unit. So we did a bunch of history units this year, including the Ibn Battuta unit study. And when I went to write it up as a lesson plan that I could offer on my website, Website, I realized that if I were to do that whole unit again, I would approach it differently. And so I'm sharing with you a few books that will complement that unit because primarily for that unit, we did a few projects and concentrated on North Africa, primarily Morocco. And then we didn't do any of the other areas that Mbatuta traveled to. And so looking back, I wish that we had taken that uh, his lifetime and turn it into basically a mini world history unit to cover all those different areas. Okay, so I have some books that are going to complement that unit and also could just complement a unit on that particular region. The first book I want to share with you is called Story of the Mongolian Tent House, and this book is going to complement our Genghis Khan unit study Marco Polo, unit study Mongolia, gen just a general area of Mongolia, as well as our Ibn Battuta unit study since he did travel through the steppe and into China. And when we were doing our Marco Polo unit and Genghis Khan unit, I realized that we didn't have a lot of picture books specifically on Mongolia, so I'm really happy to include this one. I actually have more on my wish list, and they're not going to come until next year, but I did end up finding a lot more that can complement that unit. Uh, as far as like the younger elementary age group and the picture books. And I love adding those to our unit study. So this one has really rich, beautiful illustrations. It's a medium length picture book. It seems like it has a lot of content. This is a haul video, so we haven't actually read any of these things or done any, any of these projects. But you can check back on our review videos and that way you can find out how we use these materials and how we like them. And because some of these units we've already completed them, the you can find how we enjoy these materials on the blog post that accompanies those unit studies and then i can share with you all of the materials that we're using now that didn't make it into that review video okay so this would make such beautiful art inspiration we we typically include illustrations with our main lesson books and we do uh chalk drawings to begin our units and i find that this would be a really beautiful uh, inspiration. It's really lovely. Okay. The next book I want to share with you is called Tunisian Folklore, Folktales, Songs, and Proverbs. And we got this book because when we were doing our Ibn Matuta unit, we covered mostly Morocco, North Africa area, and then we did some projects, but we didn't actually explore some of the other countries that he traveled through and so Tunisia was one that we didn't have any information on and so we picked up two books that could complement that part of the unit study and this is again something that if I were to do that unit again I would do it this way the way we did it uh, isn't how I've set up the lesson plans. I like the way I set up the lesson plans way better because it really hits all these different areas that Imbatuta traveled through and explores each of those regions, maybe not historically accurate because some of these books, they can span many uh, many years, and it might not be exactly the time that Ibn Battuta traveled through it, but at least it gives you a glimpse into the culture, the heritage, the region, the geography, and possibly the food and other things like that. So this book is, it seems like it's kind of a simple, uh, the, the, as far as the quality seems a little bit simple. The 
front cover although it's really beautiful it looks like the image was like enlarged kind of pixelated a little bit and the printing's just a little bit off but those are just aside the point i just i really appreciate books that have that high quality feel it kind of makes it feel like an experience when you're reading through them but this one was such a treasure to find i don't know how it's going to fare so i apologize if this ends up not being a great addition to this unit but i was happy to find something that included a variety of things like the folk tales and the proverbs this the stories and the songs and so so I'm, I'm excited to read this with the children as an addition to that unit. I also found from the same author, The Great and Marvelous Akarak and Other Tunisian Tales. I probably pronounced that wrong. And I believe that this book, when I was looking it up online, I believe this book is a collection of the stories that this child grew up with, or it's possibly included in this book. But the author was reminiscing about the stories that he learned and heard and his parents or the community or his mother would tell him when he was growing up and I believe that these include those stories and so this is a really small book this could be bedtime reading or part of your opening activities and I'm excited to include both of these books as part of that unit. So one more book for our Imbatuta unit is called The Storyteller by Evan Turk and this one is I believe situated around Morocco and it has these really rich interesting illustrations in these really beautiful browns tans and blues I love that combination of colors and then it has a uh, what I would consider a more lengthy picture book so this could take a little bit longer to read and it just seems like such a an invitation into this world so I'm really excited about this book I will again have how we liked it on the blog post that accompanies uh, that unit study. All right, so let's look at a couple other books that we got for our units, and then we can dive into the projects. So this book is called The Chinese Medicine Cookbook, Nourishing Re Re Recipes to Heal and Thrive. And the reason why I got this cookbook was because the cookbook that we had for our Ancient China and China Main Lesson Block was one that I personally had in... Um, you know, as, as part of my cookbooks. And it was such an old cookbook and being old isn't the problem. It was just that it wasn't what I ended up needing and wanting and looking for once we started our unit. And so once we were heavily into our unit, I realized that we hardly any of the recipes were of interest to me except for one. And so we did the roasted duck. I don't have a video on that because we were missing one of the most important recipe uh, ingredients. We did have the duck, but we didn't have the plum sauce. And so we ended up just kind of doing our own thing with it. And that was the only recipe that I sort of took from that cookbook. It, it just wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So recently I went looking for another cookbook and granted our unit is now done. And oftentimes, even when we're done with the unit, we will still have projects that trail long after the unit is done as we're working on new units. And so we will still do recipes from this book, but that unit is done, that review video is done. So you can check the blog post for the Ancient China Main Lesson Block so you can find out how we enjoyed um, this book. However, all of the recipes that we try in this book, they will be tutorial videos that you can find on the playlist for our ancient China main lesson block. And you can also find that link down in the description box below. So what really drew me to this book, because there were about four books that I was looking at, what really drew me to this book was the fact that it said that it was an ancient Chinese I'm um, sorry, a Chinese medicine cookbook. And on some of the pages that were shown uh, as part of the preview, it explained the Mm, I, I think the Chinese philosophy on medicine and food and the elements. And I found that to be that I really resonated with that because when we are doing our unit studies, I like to include a variety of books uh, from historical fiction to geography, to biographies, to cookbooks. And one thing that I love about introducing food into our main lesson blocks one is really memorable and it's enjoyable and we love the food but you get to learn something about that region or that culture of those people and i find that looking at chinese food through chinese medicine is just what i was looking for and not even realizing that that's what i was looking for for this unit it really brings together the culture with the food and i can't wait to dive into this book and review 
especially these opening pages because this is going to be so helpful in understanding why foods are prepared the, the way they are and which foods are nourishing for you depending on what ailment you have. So oh, look at that cold food and hot food. Super curious and interesting. I've only had a little bit of background in, in this, these kinds of, uh, I guess, Eastern medicine, and I've always found them really fascinating. So I'm fascinating. So I'm really excited to include this in our unit. Okay. So let me put this aside and share with you a few more books that we got. My son, who is 14, uh, asked for these books because he read the 24 hours in ancient China, which of course we include for our China unit. He liked it so much. And maybe like in the book, it said that there were other books in the series. So he asked me to look for whatever I could find. And I found two of them and there may be more or they may be writing more depending on when you're seeing this. <laughs> so, so far we know of three, 24 hours in ancient China, 24 hours in ancient Rome, and we have 24 hours in ancient Egypt. So we are not doing a Rome or Egypt unit um, anytime soon. We've previously done them multiple times, but I still got these for my son anyway, because this is a great way to refresh information that you've previously learned in a unit study. And also anytime my children want uh, anytime they request books that are nonfiction or historical fiction, I'm eager to get them for them because there's so much learning to be had in those kinds of books or biographies and picture books, all those kinds of books. I'm uh, looking to include them as much as possible. And when my children ask for them, I'm really happy to include them. So I would put this reading level at maybe middle school or high school. My son is in ninth grade currently, and this was just right for his reading level. And what's really cool about this book is that it takes you a day in the life, 24 hours of a variety of people that you might find in ancient China or ancient Egypt or ancient Rome. And so for this book, you have a carter, a baker, a slave girl, a mother, imperial messenger. You have all these different people and then you can see their life in 24 hours. So that was ancient Rome. We also have ancient Egypt and just realized they're by different authors. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then the same format here, 24 hours day in the life of these different people. So here you have a midwife, a ruler, an embalmer, a soldier, and, um, and more. Okay, so I only have one more book to share with you. Again, for, I believe, our Ancient China unit, it's Where the Mountain Meets the Moon. I think this is fiction, and I can't remember why I chose this one over other books. My daughter says that there was a reason, and I cannot remember. A lot of times when we're putting together our our wish list, there, I have an ongoing wish list on Amazon, and uh bookshop.org and a child's dream and rainbow resource that those are four main places that I shop. Oh, and Blick art supplies. And so I have, I, anytime I'm like, Oh, I, I, I'm looking for this or I need this. It goes onto the wish list. And sometimes by the time we order, it could be up to six months later. And then by the time it arrives, it can be even longer than that. So this is going to accompany our ancient China unit. Now we've already completed it, which means that my 14 year old will read this independently. And I will read this aloud to my 10 year old. Oh, that's so beautiful. I didn't realize it came with a few illustrations inside. And I, this book just, it feels really good quality and that always delights me. But I also appreciate the subtleties that each chapter has a different color for the little chapter title and a different image. And then it seems like occasionally you have other icons and illustrations. That illustration is so beautiful and the printing is really nice. Okay, so now let's look at the projects and the other supplies that we got. So I want to share with you this Super Sculpey Ultralight Oven Bake Clay. This is my absolute favorite polymer clay. We use it for all kinds of projects. Uh, if you want to check out some of the projects that we've done, you can check the description box below. I've linked a couple of videos where we've used our Sculpey uh, clay 
We've also used it for making relief maps and bowls and things for our science units. And so I like having this on hand because when we're ready to do a project, sometimes the projects aren't we don't pre-plan some of our projects. Sometimes they're just spontaneous projects that, you know, moment of inspiration is like, oh, let's, let's try this. And having these supplies, the polymer clay, paper, paints, tape, glue, those kinds of things, having those on hand means that we can quickly put together a project that we're inspired by without waiting for the materials to arrive. So I went ahead and I ordered three of them. Sometimes these are hard to find or they're out of stock. So whenever I can get my hands on them, I definitely include them in our general supplies in our homeschool. And I highly recommend them, especially for really young students because the clay is so soft. Even like it doesn't need a lot of conditioning. It's just soft to begin with. And it stays soft. Like you can leave the package unwrapped and it just does not go hard for like I'm, I'm going to say at least a year ours has never gone hard, even when it's been open and maybe even longer. I'll just say that my experience is that at least a year it hasn't, um, hasn't gone hard. You do bake it. And once you bake it, it is hard and then you can paint it. So that gives us a lot of versatility with it. Okay. So that was from Blick Art Supplies. Something else I picked up from Blick Art Supplies are my Sargent Art chalk pastels. And these are chalks that I've been using for our chalk drawings for, gosh, probably like 15 years. And I really like them because they come in these really beautiful range of colors. They're nice and pigmented. They're really rich and bright. And we go through them often. And so I went ahead and I got kind of a smaller set than what we typically get, but the colors that we we normally use. We usually don't use the pinks and the purples that often. Well, the purple a little bit for the nice guy. And so um, they didn't have the larger set that had 48 colors. So I went ahead and I got this one to, you know what? This is different than the ones that I normally get. Is it? Nope, they're still chalk pastels. They're just, the packaging I think is different. Hmm. Well, the packaging is different. You can check out the original packaging that we normally get. I hope I got the right kind. Um, on all of our chalk drawing videos, it's pretty much the same box of uh, Sergeant, Art, Sergeant Art chalk pastels. We're down to like little nubs on some of them, but happy to have a new box. Okay, something else that we got from Blick Art Supplies are the Daniel Smith Walnut Ink. So this actually I use as a stain when we're, when we're needing something for uh, wood or to age paper. Uh, we've used it on bricks. I just really, really like this stain as a stain. It's actually an ink that you can use, I believe, with um, fountain pens or with the calligraphy pens, but I've used it as a stain. We liked it so much. Actually, the first time I got it, I thought, oh gosh, this is going to be so much. We're never going to get through it. We got through it, so I ended up buying two because it ended up being so versatile for our needs. Okay, so that was it from Blick Art Supplies. Let me share with you what I got from A Child's Dream. We have been ordering materials from A Child's Dream for also about 15 years. I love their materials so much. I pretty much have tried all of their art supplies, I think, and all of their homeschool supplies and all of their games. Love all of the things that they carry and their candles too. And so something that we needed more of. So this is not a new product for us. We have purchased these before. This is the undyed wool yarn in the worsted weight and the bulky weight. I was getting a lot of it because we had run low on our undyed wool. We had used it when we did some natural dyes with like onion skins and avocado pits and tea. But we needed more so that we could use this kit, which is the botani botanical dye kit. And this comes with natural dyes. I've already shared this, but I'm going to share this with you again since it's to go with our yarn. But this one comes with all of these natural dyes, which I'm really, really excited about because I feel like I'm going to get a richer dye with these um, more pigmented and concentrated dyes and they're all natural which is really neat and the best part is that it also comes with all of the additional uh, I guess the fixatives and the 
actually, I don't remember what they're called, but the, the, in order to fix the color or even to change the color. So it comes with all of those things as well. So the aluminum sulfate, the cream of tartar, calcium carbonate, and the iron. And it also comes with all of the safety gear in order to safely mix your, uh, your dyes and uh, the instructions as well. So I am super excited about doing this. This has been on my wish list to do for years, literally years, and I keep getting kind of nervous about doing it, and I don't know how to do it, I don't have all the materials, and so now we have definitely enough yarn so that each skein of yarn can be used for one color, and then I have a really exciting project that we're gonna do with our dyed yarn once um, once it's all set. Okay, so let me put this aside Oops. and show you some of the other kits and projects that we got. So, oh, and this one is also from a child's dream as well. And they have an indigo kit that we also have and haven't used yet. Okay, so the last things I want to show you are all from Rainbow Resource. And Rainbow Resource has been a long time homeschool favorite of mine. I've gotten so many resources from them, but I have to admit that more recently we have looked elsewhere for material. It just hasn't suited our needs quite as much as it used to. However, what I like about them is that all of the materials that you're going to find are suitable for students through high school. Sometimes when I'm looking for projects uh, on just generally online, uh, especially Amazon, you're, you're looking, it's just, it's really hard to make your way through all of their products because it's not an educational website. And so I, I appreciate, uh, Rainbow Resource. They have so, so many things. And the things that I'm sharing with you today are all part of our physics unit for my son, who is 14. And these are going to complement his lessons because they are fairly basic. So even young students can do them, but it's really great to have these hands-on models in order to truly understand the more complex physics that you're learning. So a child can do these and it's great for the experience because you're just, you're learning through the experience. But as you get older, you start to lay in the math and the, the deeper scientific concepts. And then still having these hands-on projects really helps you to bring maybe those heavier topics and those more, more complex topics down to like a, a basic level. So the first one I want to share with you is called Build Your Own Hydraulic Machines. This is a four-in-one kit. I have to admit that we've already started this one and my son has already completed two of the kits, but it comes really nicely packaged. All the materials are such high quality. It comes with the directions, four kits in one, which is super cool. And they're all hydraulic space so that you have the syringes in order to move the parts using hydraulic pressure. So it's a really, really cool kit. And since we've already started this one, I can already tell you that I highly recommend it. Really enjoyed it. Okay, so then we have some bridge kits and these are all by Pathfinders. They may have had more, but we got these three. So there's the lift bridge and the Strauss Bascule Bridge, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and the Swing Bridge. Uh, my son loves these kinds of kits and projects. He's so good at tinkering and creating and building, and so I'm really excited to include these as part of our physics unit. And of course, there are tutorials on all of these once we're, they're done, so you can uh, check the physics playlist for those tutorials. And the last thing I want to share with you is Leonardo da Vinci's helicopter. And I am really excited about this one. This is also by Pathfinders. This one is really heavy. It looks like, or it feels like the materials are really sturdy, really high quality because it it's quite heavy. And I was really excited about this one because a lot of times we can sort of create our own projects. But there are some projects where having a kit really makes it so much easier because there are some things that I'm just not going to be able to create on my own. N not easily and not even with much difficulty. It's just not going to be, I'm not going to have access to the materials. So I'm really happy for this kit. It looks really exciting with the whole, um, I don't know, that whole aerial screw setup here with the gear. 
super super neat so i'm really excited about this one as well we have used other kits um, other kits by this brand for leonardo da vinci's different uh, like inventions and i like the wooden ones better than the plastic ones we had a catapult we had lots of catapults that were wooden that we also got from Rainbow Resource, but we had one that was plastic and I didn't care for that one quite as much. And the kids didn't enjoy putting that one together quite as much as the wooden ones. Okay, I think that is everything for this whole video. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information and links to the materials that we bought. You can find that link down in the description box below. If you'd like to see some of our other playlists for our history units or our science units, you can tap on the screen right now. That link is also in the description box below. And if you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.